a safe to hide Take care of me Protect me from sadness Guide my steps into the light Hello and welcome. Uh, my name is John Phelan. I'm Director General at ICMP. And ICMP is a global trade body for the music publishing industry. We represent 74 different national trade body associations on six continents, as well as major multinationals and several hundred independents and SMEs. And today it's a real pleasure to welcome you to this event on the new project of standardized global music cue sheets. I would like to do three short things in this welcome. First of all, to welcome what is an outstanding audience. It's great to see a broad swathe across the creative industries. I see CMOs, publishers, digital music services, broadcasters, governments. Uh, just looking through the list, we're seeing attendees from across five continents. So a very warm welcome to everybody uh, to today's event. I would also like to acknowledge the incredible work being done uh, by the Society Publisher Forum. This entity is an incredible uh, example of cross-industry cooperation. And before I pass uh, to our co-hosts for today's event at CSAC and to Director General Gadi Oron, on behalf of ICMP, I really want to acknowledge publicly the incredible work being done by the Society Publisher Forum and in this particular project. That work is being carried out by our speakers here today and also by the working groups of the SPF who have worked tirelessly on this particular project for a number of years. The Q Sheets project is really their achievement. So I want to uh, specifically mention them by name, Alex Patterby, co-chair of the Society Publisher Forum with his colleague, Gustavo Gonzalez, Jose Macaro, the director of information systems at CSAC, and of course, our speakers here today, Terry Nelson Carpenter, co-chair of the working group on Q Sheets with Jens Kinderman of GEMA, and Mark Vermat, our speaker from SoundMouse today. Each of the individuals has worked tirelessly on this project, so hats off to them. I would also like to acknowledge the hard work of my direct colleagues at ICMP, Anladena Velasco. She's our SPF coordinator on behalf of ICMP, and also to Özlem Aksoy in our office, who many of you will know for managing today's event and getting such a great audience. As trade bodies, what we can bring to the table with such projects is cross-industry cooperation and global reach. For no matter how big any one company is, there are some projects which demand cross-industry work. That's the very spirit of the SPF and what we're committed to achieving. It's also the spirit of the work with the professionals at CSAC. And I would like also to publicly today thank Gadi Oron and all his team for their work on this particular tool. As to future support, whatever ICMP can do in order to ensure this project's success and to support the SPF, we will do whatever it takes. We're excited and looking forward to the next three phases in this particular project. First of all, driving uptake worldwide, and this event is one of the steps along the way in driving that uptick of the global cue sheet. Secondly, working with automated content recognition technologies in order to ensure the cue sheet project is digitized and efficient. And thirdly, issuing the standardized cue sheet in multilingual versions. We're already looking at Japanese, Mandarin, and Spanish for the project itself. The purpose is really very simple to increase creator pay for their incredible work by finding cross-industry efficiency and making music license usage as easy as possible for broadcasters and others in the music value chain. Data is not dull, it's everyone's duty, and it's the ink on creators' paychecks. And with that, I would like to welcome you all today to have a great event, and I would like to pass to CSAC Director General, Mr. Gadi Oron. Gadi, over to you, please. Thank you, Johnny. Many thanks and thank you all for joining us today. Um, CISAC, as many of you know, represents over 230 author societies that come from 121 countries. And I'm delighted uh, to be here today. I'm delighted that CISAC uh, could support this important project. Um, it's wonderful to see so many uh, people joining us today from societies, from publishers, broadcasters, digital platforms, um, many um, other stakeholders from our business. And uh, like you, Johnny, I would like to first thank the organizers of the event. I would like to thank the co-chairs of the Society Publishers Forum uh, Steering Group, Alex Butterby, who represents publishers, and uh, Gustavo Gonzalez, who represents the societies. Um, many, thank to, many thanks to both of you for, for all the work that uh, you've done in putting together this program. And also, 
I would like to thank the other speakers, Terry, Jens, and Mark, and also special thanks to you, Johnny, uh, for uh, to you and to your team for helping us uh, uh, prepare this uh, program and to make this project and this event. Um, as you mentioned, uh, Johnny, uh, this project, the international harmonization of cue sheets is, is really an important one and an enormous amount of work has gone into it in the last uh, five years. And I'm, I'm really delighted that we've been able to conclude it successfully. Um, and it has been uh, a notable achievement because it comes during a most challenging time for all of us, uh, societies, publishers, producers, everyone is struggling to maintain their normal operations uh, these days. And everyone is under more pressure than ever before. And of course, I'm not going to go into the details of the project in this short introduction. I think that uh, this, will, this will be what we will do in the next two hours, but I think that it's worth remembering a few of the big benefits of the collaboration that we had. And I would like to very briefly mention four things. The first one is the obvious achievement of this project, which is to facilitate a more efficient flow of information. Uh, music cue sheets are vital to the swift and the accurate identification of music in audiovisual productions. But uh, this something, the system around this has never worked as effectively as it should. And we all knew that something needed to be done and uh, things needed to be improved. And this project achieves that. And the new template for cue sheets achieves exactly that. The second thing I would like to, to mention, and I think it's worth remembering, is that this project is not just about data. It's about money. It's about more money. And uh, the new Q Sheets uh, template will help societies, it will help publishers direct more royalties back to the creators. And the more efficient the preparation of worksheet of Q Sheets by production companies, the more money will go to the right, uh, right holders, to the creators and to the publishers. Um, the third thing I would like, third thing I would like to mention is that this project is also a very good example for a successful collaboration between different parts of our industry and getting to, to where we have done uh, with this project uh, should be something that is of an inspiration for further collaboration between our organizations and between our sectors in the future. And finally, the fourth thing that I would like to mention is that I think that it really, this project really raises the bar for best practice. At, again, at a challenging time and uh, at a time when we most need it. Uh, with traditional revenues from live and from public performance going down and under pressure, every income stream is important and every income stream needs to be maximized and we need to put more money in the hands of the creators and the rights holders. So now that this project is completed and the template has been launched, our challenge is to take it uh, to the global level, to make it work on a global scale um, it means implementation in the market. Uh, we would like to promote it in forums, workshops. The website that was launched by the Society Publishers Forum is very important uh, for that. And uh, again, all of these steps will help this uh, project become even more successful. So I will conclude by thanking again everyone who joined us today. Um, it's really an enormous level of participation I saw and um, it just proves how important this project is. And with that, it's, uh, it's my pleasure to hand it over to Alex and to Gustavo. Alex, Gustavo, please, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, Gary. Um, so Gustavo and I will take you through the rest of today and introduce the panelists. Um, we've got a lot of ground to cover and hopefully uh, lots of questions from everybody participating, if everybody knows how the question and answer system works. Um, I hope you do. Uh, we'll do our best to cover them. Um, I just wanted to echo everything that's been said. Everyone's worked very hard on this. Uh, I am generally known as the uh, the doubting Thomas of, of the world, and I will um, always say there's much further to go. But uh, this is a milestone, and this is a first step towards something extraordinary, which will uh, ch transform part of our business into something uh, fit for the 21st century. Uh, and uh, that is sadly a rarity in the music industry. Um, 
But anyway, uh, have you got anything you'd like to say, Gustavo, just to add to that? Thank you, Alex. Uh, uh, yes, uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for spending this time with us. I'd like to thank John and Yadi and Almuden as well, and uh, Jose and Terry and, Je and, and Jens as well, and Mark as well, for be, be here with us today for helping us to organize this uh, event. As Alex said, this is the first of many. We hope we can have more events like this in the future. Um, and this has been very important, as Kadi said, that uh, uh, it's the first uh, uh, time we can show the collaboration between the society and publishers. Uh, the SPF exists for a long time. Uh, it's, a, it's the forum where societies and publishers can discuss projects uh, and exchange knowledge uh, and have a very close relation and transparent that we, we have been, I've been attending the forum for more than 10 years. So it's, uh, uh, everyone is watching us. It's uh, invited to participate with us. Uh, as Gadi mentioned as well, there's also a new web page uh, where we'll be sharing the details of the key working groups we have. Uh, the idea is to keep following what's been discussed in the market, uh, the most important topics. And please very, feel very welcome to suggest as well new topics of discussions as well. We're always open to that. Uh, and I think we have a, a, a long agenda. The topic is very large, so not going to be speaking for long. So, Alex, let's move to, to present our, our speakers. Excellent. Um, so, first of all, from, uh, from the publisher side, I'll do the publisher side, you do the society side. We have Jens, uh, we have, sorry, Terry Nelson Carpenter, who uh, is a uh, very committed member of the Society Publisher Forum and who has um, worked very hard on this cue sheet as the um, publisher lead on the, on the particular working group that deals with cue harmonization. Um, and then we have Jens, uh, who is the co-chair from the society side for this working group. And finally, our last member of our uh, distinguished panel is Mark Fermat from Soundmouse, who is here to share uh, how we're going to, well, talk about how we might integrate this with the sort of work that his people do, yeah, music recognition technology being an obvious, complete opposite end of the technology scale to the pieces of paper we currently ex exchange in the form of cue sheets. So hopefully that will uh, guide us to where we may go next. But let's talk about where we are going now, first of all. Uh, would it be a good idea at this point, do you think, to share the slides? Uh, and maybe then Terry and Jens, you can talk about the um, the standard itself and what it means. That'd be a good idea. Sure. So I'm hopefully about to share the presentation of the screen. That's an example of the uh, cue sheet completed. Is that a good place to start, chaps? Yep. So um, I'm not sure if uh, Jens wants to start, but one of the questions that was asked is, you know, why do you, uh, why must cue sheets be harmonized or and why did the SPF feel that? And it's because, you know, in order to provide, uh, you know, consistent, uh, clear and concise music rights information, you know, for all audiovisual works worldwide, we had to come together in preparing something that can be used by all and acknowledged by all. And that is the music cue sheet, which is the chronological listing of all music in an audiovisual program. It's actually not only a music document for music rights information, it's a legal document for the creators of content. So this has many, many important uses and um, Jens, did you want to talk about what the actual cue sheet is all about and, uh, and why we included some of the uh, fields that we did? You're muted, Jens. So uh, first of all, maybe for a short explanation, what, what is a cue sheet? So the, the cue sheet um, um, is a metadata file which describes how music is used in a movie or an episode. And um, the cue sheet 
provides the detail, detailed information to publishers, producers, um, societies, and enabling each of the stakeholders here um, how music um, is placed and used in an audiovisual productions and films, TV programs, and uh, as such. And as you could see here in, in this example, um, um, this includes um, information about the, the film title, the series title, um, and also includes some um, information about the, the production itself. We call it header information, like um, the episode number, the film duration, the production company, like the stakeholders who are included. But the most important thing for us as a, a society who has um, who's dealing with the rights of our composers and, and publishers is the musical content. And the musical content, as you could see here in, 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 the, in the table, um, this consists of the music title and the music usage, um, the time in, time out information when a cue is starting and the music is starting and it's fading out. And the, the duration of the music and most important here is also yeah who's who are the interested parties who is the composer who is the publisher and how are the shares who is the share of this right uh, of the right on this music and this is uh, yeah the, as you said it's a legal document and we we, we say this is the primary source um, for performing right organizations like here, um, GAMA or others worldwide, um, yeah, to compensate and use it as a basis for the distribution to composers, publishers for their work. This is um, really, really important. Well, one of the things that, that from a broadcaster perspective, and the reason I go back to that is, um, from my experience uh, prior to having my own publishing company, I was the head of music at Fox Family Worldwide for 15 and a half years. And cue sheets were an instrumental part of what we produced in our music departments after the creation of music for an audiovisual program that we were creating. And also when we acquired content, you know, the music cue sheet was able to show us what music was contained in that program. And then we'd be able to look at all the supporting documentation. When you have something um, that doesn't um, provide you with full and complete information, it's really hard to be able to confirm that, oh, this acquisition we got is correct because the music cue sheet laid out what music is in there. I have composer agreement. I have licenses. I have all these different things. So it, 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 it really um, has a very important role to play on both sides of the equation, the user of the music and the creator of the music. And uh, without being able to clearly identify, as Yen said, the interested parties and how the music is used, you know, it, we've gotten cue sheets from from very simple handwritten paper type of notation to very well expressed, depending on uh, independent publishers all the way to broadcast networks. And with everybody having their different idea uh, for their own business uh, concerns, what a cue sheet looks like, this form is going to be very helpful because we believe that it takes the best elements of all that we've seen and helps be and helps us to be able to provide that clear and concise metadata information in order for all parties to utilize this document effectively. Uh, so, so yeah. sorry, go ahead. I was just going to ask. So, okay, the cue sheets have existed since films existed. Yeah. What makes this? What makes this important as opposed to every other cue sheet we've ever seen? Because it's comprehensive and complete. <laughs> I think um, this, is, this is the first time, uh, Alex, that there is a clear description what a cue sheet should consist of, 
and um, trying to describe all the elements uh, we have here and um, provide it to all stakeholders in this uh, process in the in the in the chain of this um, musical process we we are talking about and um, it's it's also this was also interested when we started this uh, working group um, in 2015 2016 to get a clear understanding of the of the working practices and um, this was really interesting um, um, to to start with uh, um, a questionnaire to get this clear understanding and what we also figured out that we all we had different yeah meanings of of um, common terminology and and stuff like this and so we started to to draft first this clear understanding as a starting point um get all the answers of um, many publishers and, and and many societies and to achieve this uh, result as you could see an harmonized um q sheet um with um, a uh, dedicated here terminology um, and, and a clear description what is meant about here Q sheet origin, Q sheet use. And this was a, a hard work for us uh, for, <laughs> yeah. for the working group, which consists not only of publishers and, um, and societies. Later on, we had also producers and, and these piece joining the group and I think this had multi perspectives and this I think was uh, a key um, to this uh, success of this working group that we had all the different angles of this um, industry in this working group and all the experience um, from all the societies to make this complex um goal really uh, as a success come out with a success and the other thing is is that you know this this tool and this template and all of this identifier information it wasn't created so that we will dictate how societies will pay for the usage of music it's it's truly to clarify how the music is being used so that as these societies on a global basis each and individually pay for these audiovisual rights they have the ability to do so having uh complete and accurate information and you know alex and and gustavo you have many other working groups within the society publisher forum and all of them are working toward a standardization of some form or another where common works registration, common um, you know, royalty distribution. Uh, it's great that cue sheets and audiovisual music has risen to the same level that this is important for us to have that common format so that we can all benefit. And it's all for the same reason, clear and accurate information, because we know when it gets registered, we actually get paid. So I guess, um... The, the question I would probably put to Mark, who is uh, who represents a company that's a very heavily involved in music recognition technology. Surely we don't need the cue sheet anymore. Surely we uh, music recognition technology will just automatically do all this for us, so we can uh, we can stop and uh, hang our heads up and uh, rest for a while now. Yeah, yeah it's a fair it's, summary. It's, or? Uh, it's funny to hear that. Um, no, I, I'll tell you that is uh, that's absolutely not right. And uh, I don't think we were ever one of those companies to say that. Um, you know, we've been doing cue sheets for <clears throat> 20 years now, believe it or not. We were started 20 years ago. Um, so we've never thought that cue sheets would go just the way that cue sheets were created is, is, is changing. Um, some cue sheets are created manually, some cue sheets are created uh, using audio recognition tools. Uh, there, there are other automation or semi-automation tools in place that can be used to create cue sheets. So I don't think this changes anything in relation to how, uh, uh, you know, to, to the concept of a cue sheet. And also, you know, let's not forget, um, if you look at like how people consume media, a lot of it is becoming uh, on demand. It's, it's, it's no longer linear television. Uh, there's nothing to monitor really. You know, if you, if you look at like a lot of video on demand platforms, streaming platforms, 
you're not monitoring streaming platforms. It's all asset based. So uh, if anything, I would say the the asset is becoming more important. Uh, it's 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 much more a nonlinear asset. <clears throat> and associated with this nonlinear asset, you've got a cue sheet that is one of the documents, one of the deliverables that belongs to that program. You know, from a broadcaster's perspective, uh, I think, Terry, you mentioned it earlier, uh, you know, it, it's, it's one of, 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 of many bits of data that is used by a broadcaster. It's an essential document that belongs to that program alongside with, you know, licensing information about how the music was licensed into a production. Um, and, 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 you know, which actors were used in a program and how the actors were licensed into a program. So I think you need to see it as something that belongs to an asset and should travel with the asset wherever the asset goes. And, you know, somebody asked them the question here, um, you know, low, low level people are entering this information in at production companies. Actually, it is a cross section of composers, music editors, and those production assistants that may or may not have an understanding of what a cue sheet is. This may seem daunting, but I think whenever you provide a roadmap to um, people on how to and give them the, the, the stylized tool as you're looking at now and the identifiers and being able to include both of those that information and with the help and assistance of their society, should they have any questions, you know, you have to you have to start off by walking and hopefully in the long term you're running and it's smooth and easy and working and you're making any kind of alteration you might need to in the future. But I think that you're looking at, you know, uh, something that I would believe would help those lower uh, level uh, employees help in doing this correctly. Well, and it would be very we have nice. to start somewhere. It would be very nice for you know junior people in a production team that don't have a lot of experience with this to always see the same cue sheet. And the reality is, is exactly. you know, they see one cue sheet from one company and another cue sheet from another company, and they're completely different. And you know our clients are uh, broadcasters primarily, and they use our system to um, uh, create cue sheets and to get cue sheets from production teams. And also on our system, one client you know, has a completely different view about what a cue sheet should be and is than another client. And uh, you will see that there is differences in the cue sheets, not uh, just the fields that are being collected, but also in the way fields are labeled and the values that are available against, you know, we were looking at the like music source or music origin here, um, exactly. how that is labeled and how that is termed and which values are available. That is very different from one client to the next. And I think, you know, this, this, um, this this new standard gives us something to hang our hat on. You know, it's it's a first step, which I think a lot of people have said to some to, to sort of something else. Um, I think um, one of the challenges that we are facing is that it's not just the broadcasters that have competing requirements or different requirements in relation to cue sheets. It's also the the end destination, uh, the PROs that have certain requirements uh, uh, in relation to cue sheets that need to be met. Uh, by the broadcaster to enable that reporting. So if you are a broadcaster that works across three or four different territories, it becomes much more problematic because you need to meet the requirements of those four different PROs and you sort of put all the requirements together and whatever is left is sort of the strictest set between the four of them. And um, you know that may mean that if you've got four different PROs, that all four have different values for music origin or music source. How do you deal with how do you deal with that? And uh, you know it becomes very interesting when you have one PRO that requires genre information as part of the cue sheet that needs to be reported. And um, you know the other thing to sort of sort of fire off a few things that sort of come to mind. Um, you know there's there is some information about uh, the the music performer here, which is great uh, because. You know, you can uh, you see that this is often missing. You know, you, you, I've never really seen a standard cue sheet that has the ability to put in share information, which is very common in the U.S., and to put in a performer, which is more common in in, in Europe. And to see both of them sort of in the same cue sheet standard is 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 sort of a, a very good illustration of the different people and the different areas that have fed into this. 
Um, but you know, we've got cue sheets where the, the, the record label is a mandatory field, uh, where in addition to the record label, uh, a unique identifier that is similar to an IPI number needs to be provided for the record label alongside an ISRC, which is here, uh, and a catalog number. Um, so okay, here- so I think so I'm yeah. just gonna cut you off there a little bit because- uh, Yeah, <laughs> sorry. To one of the, no, no, it's fine. I'm just gonna have to be rude sometimes. That's the way I am. Um, the, uh, there's been a number of questions along that those lines and they largely relate to, uh, and sorry if I'm not specifically answering everybody's questions here, they largely relate to why have you included this and not included that? And broadly, the answer is that we have discussed most of those topics and we've come to a consensus on what was generally needed and what was generally not. And where we have concentrated on information to identify a musical work, it's to identify that musical work. It's not to identify the current owner of that musical work. That's the proper place of the works registration and the reconciliation between the society's copy of this cue sheet and the works registrations that they have. Uh, we'll talk a bit about the future where we may be able to incorporate in an electronic format of this cue sheet, the conversation about the link between the cue as represented in the cue sheet and the cue as registered. And that speaks to somebody else was asking about why rolled up cues, which are used in uh, societies and by societies and publishers to compact the information they have. Whereas in a cue sheet, the information is always presented at its most unfurled level. Um, so we are not intending to use rolled up cues in this cue sheet. We are not intending to represent the current owner of the work or their collection shares in this cue sheet. That's properly for the work's registration. This is identifying that this song was at this point in the music on this film and that this is this film in a way that we can all commonly understand that this is this film, this was this cue sheet produced by this provider for this particular version of this film. And these are the particular pieces of music identified as closely as we can um, that were in that film and the order they were in and how long they were in there for. Um, when it comes to annotating that cue sheet with further information that comes from different sources, that's where we will be looking in the future in an electronic format to provide means to annotate and update information whilst never changing the core cue sheet, which is true on the day that it was true, on the day that it was written for that production. Uh, I hope that answers some of the many questions that are flying back and forth. Um, but um, perhaps also, Jens, um, I have a question, oh, Jens is that, no, I have a question for Jens, is that right? Or will all PRO CMO members of CSAT be required to use this format? from a certain date going forward? Yeah, so um, I think uh, every society currently in between societies, we're using the, the AVR format and we aligned the AVR format um, to this cue sheet template. And so uh, in between societies, I think we have already established this standard. And uh, for us, it was important for the working group, especially working with third parties, with publishers, to, to put out uh, an harmonized model uh, and the harmonized cue sheet to make, yeah, transparent what the needs and as Mark described, um, you had, yeah, different parties, different sources, different requirements. And, and now I think we established the standard so that everyone uh, is able um, to align uh, their cue sheets to this standard and to support the process here and to support digitalization and automation. And um, maybe um, just um, you ask um, uh, Mark if, if, if the cue sheet uh, will be redundant um, when using monitoring. I think, um, I think this must be really clear. The output of, of monitoring will always be a cue sheet and metadata. So, yeah. Um, fingerprinting without metadata is, is really useless. And I think this, is, this, is, this must be really clear because only with this metadata, you can detect and go then further tracking down who is the right owner and he, who, who is uh, uh, the owner of the uh, distribution royalties and so on. So I think this is, this is really important to keep in mind that the asset and the outcoming, the deliverable will always be a cue sheet. 
Um, if it's in paper or in an electronic format, I think this, this doesn't uh, matter um, as long as the standard uh, is used and, and all the information is really there and, and uh, we have the same understanding how the, the elements and attributes are used, what's, what's uh, uh, the meaning of um, the, the category version, what's the meaning and, and the use um, of, of the origin table and, and the original type and so on. I think this, this is a clear um, yeah, message to all the, the stakeholders in this process um, to, to look at and, and um, having a blueprint, a template for creating the cue sheet. And as said, this is the primary source for, for this whole value chain and it's and important. You know what, um, Jens, one of the things that I think was very important in our society publisher forum working group and the composition and the way that this worked out is that, you know, to have a, a strong leader like Jens from a very formidable society, Gamma, and other societies that were part of the working group, and then publishers who, who also saw that need coming together and really having um, you know, a no holds bar <laughs> conversation on the issues of how this music cue sheet template and tool and identifiers would work. I think that now that we've got that tool and we've got that, those identifiers, we all have to embrace this, you know, globally. We all have to support it for it to be a success. You know, people are asking, you know, is this going to be mandated by uh, CSAC? I hope so. That would be great if it is. You know, I think it's important if we're going to have this standardization like we do with common works registration and with the, the common uh, royalty distribution, you know, all these different, you know, the CAF agreement, you know, if we have this standardized tool and it is well supported and advocated by all interested parties, we will be able to make this the go-to on how to how to prepare music cue sheets and they will be facilitated accordingly. Change is not easy. And I, I think that this working group was very thoughtful in trying to work through all of the business case needs of a cue sheet. And I think that we've done this. And is is anything perfect? No. And you know, we might have a few tweaks in the future in order to make this even better. But right now, we need to make it easy for people to use. And uh, one of those, I think it needs to be digitized. You know, I think, Mark, we need your help. <laughs> we well, need your here. help. <laughs> That's what we're here for. Yeah. And I think this is the basis. And, and Alex, you said, uh, you mentioned it already. I think the next step is going further. Uh, but this was uh, uh, really important to get this basis and the, the common ground. And, and from here, we can now face all the, the issues we have in, in this process, um, but we have this common understanding and we have new technology and now we can use uh, uh, and improve this whole process. Um, and I think this was really important that, and having all these um, stakeholders together, I think um, uh, we, we can now go next step. Definitely. I'm just trying to flick through these questions and see if there's any that we haven't covered. I'm sorry if we're not covering your question. We will certainly definitely make sure to answer your question at some point in the follow up to this meeting. And uh, we will try to do so in this meeting. Just to be clear, there's a few of these questions about this specific cue sheet and a few questions about uh, the mechanics of it. Um, for instance, uh, we show three songs one of which has an ISWC and an ISRC on it. I think it's fair to say um, and point out that the, the information which is marked with a, an asterisk or a star is nominated to be the absolute minimum mandatory information for everybody. Everybody agreed without that there's no cue sheet. This does not mean that the other information that's shown on this cue sheet is any, any way unimportant. The more of this information that's provided, the more likely it is that the process from A to Z will be completed and money will flow properly. So it is not 
by any means the case that any of these fields are unimportant because they're not marked mandatory. But in some cases, they may just not be available, in which case um, the cue sheet must be produced. And this information can, could be added at a later date when we have a, uh, the ability within an electronic cue sheet format to annotate the information that's in the existing, annotate and label that information so that we know who provided it. Um, so that we know the source and, uh, and veracity of that information. Just as from the initial cue sheet, we know that the initial source of any cue sheet is supposed to be the production company. Whether that's actually true in all cases, uh, we, we, can, we all know the answer. But um, I think it's fair to say all of the information on here is, the, is, is equivalent to the minimum amount of information necessary for a decent cue sheet. If some of it is missing, then it doesn't, it is not disastrous. But if the starred items are missing, then the cue sheet is, is below minimum standard. Um, and the other important thing to note is that the, the values and fields that we have here are not the be all and end all forever. Um, if anybody wishes to join the group and work on the next revision of this cue sheet to take into account different types of audiovisual medium or to take into account more details that are needed or might be helpful, then we're very happy to accept those uh, suggestions. This is a, you know, a first draft of many leading to many further steps towards uh, the exchange, the improved exchange of this data. Um, so I, uh, I uh, are there any other, let me see if I can find a vintage question we can ask. Well, what about, we what about challenges that we still have? Um, we are, you yeah. know, somebody had mentioned rolled up cues. That is something that we are currently discussing. Um, Jens, do you want to comment on that upcoming discussion? Yes, so uh, I think we are currently investigating um, how we can use roll up queues and how we can make the documentation of queues into works more efficient and roll up is, 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 is one of the things, but we have also considered um, if uh, or when um, monitoring data is used and sound files are used. What is the impact on, on roll up? And this is something we will focus in, in, in uh, the next couple of months and seeing um, how this will uh, have an effect or an impact on, on, the, on the logic we have to uh, adapt. And we have, um, yeah, we have a basis where we um, uh, put together some, some uh, rules. I think they are strong, but they are, in my opinion, they are, all based on, on the former one when we just talk about metadata. And now we have um, the monitoring companies and the fingerprinting. And I think there are yeah, more challenges, uh, especially when, when sound files are used. And this is something, and I'm, I'm really happy to discuss this with uh, Mark and also with BMART and, and other uh, companies uh, who will join us hopefully. Um, to have this discussion and, and get their experience. Um, what do we have to consider um, when we talk about uh, rolling up queues and making this more efficient and uh, what are the yeah obstacles and, and stuff like this? And oh, yeah. this, this is a real good. important uh, uh, thing next. Yeah, I have another question from uh, from uh, uh, society here. There are a few differences in the mandatory fields between this sheet and AVR. Um, is that intentional? No, it's not intentional. The AVR should be aligned with the international standard Q sheet. So we will, uh, if that is if that, if that is the case, we will address that, and fix that. But it may be you're not looking at the latest version of AVR, which was updated to uh, to reflect this standard. Um, yeah, it all depends price. which which AVR standard you are using, and yeah. we um, we we have a new uh, version uh, one dot three one dot eight, um, and this is reflected there. And but I think Mark wanted to uh, answer some of. Well, I, th I think in terms of the rolled up cues, uh, I, I don't think the audio recognition necessarily is the biggest hurdle there. Although, you know, of course, it, it recognizes tracks, you know, recordings uh, and rolling up becomes a bit more 
challenging as a result, but I think it's primarily an issue for producers that are creating the cue sheets. You know, they have a yes. domestic version and then they need to create an international version. They need to strip out a lot of the licensed music, turn it into production library music. And uh, they need to have that cue sheet sitting right next to them in the edit bay to find out where is that bit of licensed music so I can swap it out for a production library track. If I'm an editor in an edit bay and I need to watch a 90 minute movie to replace one cue that happens somewhere in the middle, that's a nightmare. Right. Uh, and that's a, that's a significant cost. If I've got my cue sheet right next to it that is time coded, I've got it pretty much instantly and it, it, it's a five minute job. So I think that's the biggest challenge with regard to rolling up cues, probably more so than with audio recognition, where you could apply logic um, to, uh, to, to roll up cues if you, if, you, if you really wanted to. But again, you know, there are ways around this. You know, I don't think you know, if, if rolled up cues is a really big issue for the societies and they really need it, uh, I, I think you know, th this is data, right? Data can be sliced and diced in different ways. So the view that one person gets on the same data doesn't necessarily need to be the same view that somebody else has on the receiving end of the data. As long as the data itself is the same, the view of the data can be slightly different. Um, Which is why I think it's my, my view, certainly, that the, the core cue sheet should itself remain unrolled. We can always roll it up. We can always roll it up into systems. Um, yeah, you interpret the data. Yeah. Well, that's, that's assuming that, you know, systems are, are doing it correctly. You know, what the concern of, of writers and publishers are is that societies are doing that roll up and um, we, we have no control over that. And we don't know what that looks like because the only document we have is the cue sheet. So it's rolled up by the society. We don't know if there's, you know, inherently some problem or something happened because we're all human. Even though we're dealing with technology, it's humans that are that are inputting this information and manipulating the information so we sure. don't we don't always know so sure. that's that's i, mean, I think that's again that's a role for a, another role for a for an annotation facility within the cue sheet the electronic yep. form of the cue sheet so that we can suggest what the roll-up should be uh drew uh drew here has a question which is do we have any thoughts on how to incentivize require production companies and broadcasters to use this new format Yes, and if they'd like to get paid. Well, it's I think I can say, so. I, I, I think broadcasters and producers don't really care what the cue sheet looks like, as long as it's uh, relatively easy to enter and it doesn't have too many mandatory fields that are really difficult to find. You know, as long as it's like relatively easy to deal with, I think broadcasters don't really care whether it's one thing or another. I think where broadcasters do care if where they are creating a cue sheet in accordance with one format and that cue sheet then is on air on a different channel in another country and needs to be reported to that uh, society in that country and that society is suddenly having a different set of requirements with regard to the same program i think then it becomes problematic and at that point the broadcaster needs to be able to report one cue sheet to two different countries and as a result that cue sheet is going to be more complicated to meet those requirements. So I think, so again, broadcasters, I think broadcasters don't, I, I haven't really come across broadcasters that really care a lot about what goes into the cue sheet. Perhaps a handful that own a lot of their own music, they're very focused on it, but that cue, that cue sheet that we just saw is absolutely fine for the vast majority of broadcasters that we work with. They would be over the moon if they could use that cue sheet across all the countries in which they operate. Exactly, and it's easy to be able to, when you acquire content as a broadcaster or a user of any type of AV content, to have a cue sheet that is laid out so well, it's easy to be able to confirm that you do have the rights that are that are contained within that film. So all the accompanying documents, you know, again, another use of a of, of well laid out format with concise information. Uh, Terry, uh, I'm getting a, a, a comment from Mark. Uh, there's a, a, a recently grew uh, uh, in terms of production productions, uh, original productions from the VOD platforms. So those platforms are now being the new broadcasters. They are producing their own content and everything. Uh, and this is taking a, a global scale. So uh, maybe a, a Brazilian production is being broadcast in Netflix and uh, outside Brazil and other countries. So uh, what's the, the, the importance of those platforms today and how we can get them involved as well to use this standard and to, I mean, this is gonna be a global thing and uh, not only a regional. 
So well, it's starting with the people who are creating the music to be able to support these cue sheets. It could come from uh, composers. It can come from publishers who are licensing the music. It can come, you know, in many different ways. If if it is stated that this is the global template, that music you know, needs to be reported in that format, then then they will comply just like they do in registration formats and all others that uh, information that has to be uh, registered with societies. You know, it, I, I think it, it, what's, on, what's on Netflix could be on ABC next week or NBC or CBS. You know, it's, you have to look at, you have to look at it as if it could be on any type of AV platform. And it doesn't never negates the the need for a standardized form or even the um, the creation of a cue sheet that is standard for every audiovisual program. I think it's 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 also important. Uh, standardization in general allows us um, to proceed um, stuff more automated and and more easily. Yeah. I think this is. This is the main goal in, in every uh, section to standardize because it flows and uh, it's, it's the green street and we don't have to halt. We, we can automate, it's easier to process and uh, we can yeah, fasten uh, the, the distribution and, and the, the royalties um, uh, and exchanging data more quickly and easily. I think this is this is the main goal in the future to be more, to, to be faster, to be more accurate. Um, and, and so I think this is, this is something the whole value chain um, is, is focusing on. And um, I think this is, yeah, something all, all together. This is, this is our main goal make this, this process, yeah, more efficient than, than it is now. And, I've got and, three more questions queued, a couple from very early on in the process who, who submitted their questions in advance. Uh, one from Michael Liu here, Lau here. Will there be a centralized repository of all cue sheets so broadcasters that air the same programming can search and reuse the cue sheet for greater efficiency? This would be a great incentive for broadcasters to adopt. Uh, what do we think about that? I mean, I feel that personally, that's a goal at the end of the process, uh, yeah. which would be achievable but we've made that first step towards that. First is to start sharing the information in the same way. Yeah, but, but, something electronic. but maybe this is something you can uh, um, go with your society. And uh, for example, here in Germany, um, for uh, licensed productions, um, the broadcaster hasn't, uh, the, uh, don't have to uh, provide us with the musical content. Um, it's it's enough when we get the, the header information and then we go through the um, societies um, which have the, the cue sheets and this is a really good process exchanging the, the cue sheets in between society using the Cisnet platform and therefore maybe this is uh, something um, um, discussing with your uh, society if it's possible just providing header information as we do it here in Germany. Other thing is with, with TV in-house and commission productions, therefore this is a requirement, getting the musical content, but otherwise we are just happy getting header information just to... I mean, I think, I think the idea of a, a commonly shared database is, is a great one in theory, the history of those things has not been marvelous. Um, it's, uh, it's required a lot of cooperation from people. But that said, there's no reason why those things should not start to spring up once we all agree to share the information in the same way. And well, I think Soundmouse is a, a good example of what is uh, uh, what works in this field. Yeah, well, yeah, we, we are effectively a shared database. You know, we, yeah. we, we've got studios creating cue sheets on our platforms that then air around the world. And for those broadcasters that need to report those cue sheets to their local PROs, because not all of them need to do like, like Yen said. Um, but for those that do, are yeah, but for those that do, you know, they can use the original, uh, the, usually the international version of that domestic cue sheet. Uh, for their I, I think, I think the point that I was trying to make, and I think Terry's making the same point in many ways, is that if we provide the tools, 
then these things spring up of the of, of natural naturally from the providing those tools. Yeah. So our goal is not to create the worldwide database of Q sheets. There is the AV index, which is sort of like that. There are others. Our goal is to say, if these things exist, they should all have the same sort of data in, and they should all yes. communicate with each other using this same set of data. And then it doesn't really matter if it's a single database or a, or a disseminated database or a set of regional databases or whatever. I think that's step 47 on the, on the, on the way to Nirvana. <laughs> Um, but also to get people to use this, you know, Gustavo, to, to answer your question, you know, we, the Association of Independent Music Publishers, I'm the former national chair and currently the LA chapter president, and we are having our Global Music Publishing Summit in June on the 7th, 8th, and 9th, and we are going to have a section where we are going to talk about the Q Sheet Harmonization Project and be able to give an update. and if the MPAs, uh, global MPAs and, and um, affiliated rights societies, you know, our writers are, are, you know, in North America, you have SONA, you have NSAI, you have all of these different organizations that collectively can embrace this tool, more and more people will come to find it the standard. And again, if societies all adopt it, it's gonna make it easier to point and say, this is the standard, here is the tool. Now we need to automate it, make it easy so we can deliver it easy. So yeah. I think that answers Amit Doobie's question, is there gonna be a validation tool? I think there would be a validation tool implicit in an electronic format which would grow out of this. Uh, certainly the JSON formats that we've started to adapt in the forum uh, have um, a, a, a very efficient method of centralized um, um, file validation. So that would certainly be something that if a file format arises out of this, uh, which is likely, I think, uh, but we are, you know, that's next steps. Um, then that would be about self-validating. Uh, will pre-existing cue sheets need to be updated? No, we cannot solve the world by going backwards and solving <laughs> everything that happened before. This is a going forward, let's stop adding to the problem. Uh, solution. That doesn't mean you can't go back. It doesn't mean you can't start to fix the past. But let's get let's get the future sorted out first. I think. Anybody disagree with that? I don't want to answer all the questions. Yeah. You don't um, always have the uh, the ability to revise cue sheets, and when you can, uh, it can be a good thing. But then again, think about the user of that of that content who has to distribute that cue sheet globally. It just you know, it, it, as long as the initial cue sheet is correct, you can, you can, you know, walk the chain of title to find out who owns what. We do that with catalogs. Yeah, but you, you can find the updated work registration on the society's database. Exactly. As long as the content doesn't change, um, yeah. the share information uh, will change and also maybe the publisher information will change. But as long as the, the music duration and music content uh, um, hasn't changed, um, the, the Q sheet, the original Q sheet will still have a, a, a value um, for registration. And um, the update on the, on the work level, this is something societies um, have uh, other tools to follow up. And so I think this is um, something, uh, yeah, you, you must know. Um, so the last two questions I have here, although there are many other unanswered questions, and uh, thank you everybody for answering, asking so many. Uh, one was originally sent in by uh, Simon of Book, Books Music. Um, applaud the work of the group, thank you very much. Uh, a standardized cue sheet is long overdue, we all agree. However, part of the problem with cue sheets is that they are very often filled in by junior members of staff. We as publishers insist on verification of cue sheets before dissemination. And I would encourage this to be the industry norm. We also need to educate these young production staff. And this is the importance of the cue sheets they're completing. I would echo that. My first job in the music industry was completing cue sheets for a broadcast channel for their original content. And I was a person dragged in off the street and given a pile of paper to fill out. I, I filled that paper out as best I could, but it wasn't well. I can tell you that. And it probably wasn't accurate. Um, uh, and I apologize to those who lost money as a result, but I didn't know at the time, just doing a job. 
Um, I think it's very important we educate people. Part of that is coming up with a standard set of terms. So we've done that bit. The second part, uh, I think uh, this process job is I think I something I would put to my, uh, my working group lead colleagues and say, we should also look at uh, the, pro the end to end process and see which bits we can now facilitate with our cue sheet. So that part that Simon suggests where if a publisher is placing music in a film, um, that they should seek to get a copy of the cue sheet and verify it before it goes out to the rest of the world, seems good standard practice. And if, with, a, with an electronic form, we could do that quite quickly uh, and exchange. So it's, it's worth, well worth thinking about that. Uh, what do you think, guys? Uh, yeah, it's a good idea. <laughs> Let's do it. You know, I don't, it can. I, it depends on how many how many publishers and rights information you're you're you know uh, you're dealing with. Because as a broadcaster, if you um, or a production company, if you have to send it out to so many different interested parties, it could be difficult. Something that that hosts the same composer and publisher by and large with very few licensed uh, songs that could be easy. But if you uh, if you look at it like some of these reality shows, like The Voice, um, you know, we review those cue sheets before we even file those. Um, and we try to get it right via the licensing process. But that I don't think a lot of companies have the bandwidth to be able to do that. The creators sure. of content. Well, I, th I, think, I, think it is, I, I think it would be a manageable process, uh, but you need to be realistic about the content for which you're yeah. doing. And, yeah. uh, you know, like uh, a lot of content is very ephemeral, is used one, once or twice. And, 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 you know, so you need to go for the, the ones that really sort of have a shelf life. Um, and I think that's where you could implement certain processes like that, but it needs to become part of the licensing process. And realistically, yes. a lot of cue sheets are being created currently at the end of the production process, not uh, early on. But, you know, these are production processes. So, uh, you know, I, I, you know, you have the risk of sort of putting the cart in front of the horse, um, but there, 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 there are definitely ways of making this possible as long as you focus this on the licensing process. I think. Right. And we right. could we could identify best practices. Yeah. And and encourage those. And you know, it it again, I think we're already doing that with this tool and that lower. Um, level uh, production assistant that has been charged with this task at least has a roadmap. We're making it easier for them to do this. Yeah. So um, on that note, we we have reached six minutes past five UK time, uh, which I think is uh, not past my bedtime, but is past the supposed end time of the uh, of the webinar. Um, Perhaps my colleagues in um, uh, ICMP will tell me whether we have a little bit more time to go over a few more questions. I don't want to force anybody to stay on longer than they already have sacrificed a lot of their time. Um, Alex, you got to go ahead. Sorry? Sorry, you got to go ahead from John, So, If, if you like, Alex, absolutely. Yeah, the, the webinar will stay live as long as you need and you've got a healthy audience, so push on if you like. Good stuff. All right. Um, so uh, we have further questions. Um, Jonas Hallen says, apologies for my pronunciation of people's names. Is there any certain data on the cue sheet that often hinders royalties from reaching the rights holders when there's a lack of that data? Yeah. What are the, what are the bits that are always missing that cause the problems, I think? So, so first of all is um, if you don't have the, the composer's name, um, if you don't, that's, that's really easy. If you don't have the, the composer's name, just unknown as composer. If you don't have the right uh, music title, if the music duration isn't correct. Um, so they are, are depending on, on the um, level of, um, of the cue sheet, um, there are different obstacles you, you can do wrong and uh, how to write. And this all affects um, the distribution. So um, I think we could go um, detail by detail uh, through all the elements. Um, mostly, as you uh, as you could see, those who are mandatory, um, they are meant to be mandatory because they are really necessary for 
at least having a, a minimum standard for distribution. So this is maybe something uh, you have a guideline. Thank you. Uh, Antonella Di Savaro uh, asks, what about translated show titles? How is that being addressed? Um, so there is another working group within the Society Publisher Forum that deals with uh, translated titles and other um, extraneous information to the core cue sheet. So this is for those who are not in the know. Um, CSI Miami might be called Cop Show Miami in Azerbaijan in their local language. It's not an official author title, but it effectively means that when money is reported, it comes in under that title. Those titles are best known often to broadcasters and uh, production companies and publishers. Uh, sharing those with, with the relevant society is an important part of the work that we're seeking to do. And we have a separate part of the uh, sort of extension to the AVR format, uh, which submits that information, that extraneous, not extraneous, but uh, uh, additional information on cue sheets. All of that, of course, would be incorporated into any future full exchange cue sheet format. Um, Alex, so. also, I think it's important here, uh, the translated titles is important, but more important is to get the original title, because we now have here in, in Germany the situation with one DSP, they're providing us with the uh, translated title, but not with the original title, which is a problem because yeah. <laughs> no one knows the original title and I, I can't go to the uh, uh, original society and asking for a cue sheet because I, I only have to translate the title. So I think important it is um, first give us the original title and if you have a uh, translated title, I'm glad to include this. And, and also the publishers, but, but really first, uh, and most of all, give us the original title, the mandatory information as, as mentioned in, in uh, the cue sheet standard and everything else is optional. It's good. Don't hesitate um, to, to yeah, provide. I, was, I would not discourage people from sending you, sending no. you translated titles. Uh, you know, in the end, we can link that information up if we start to do this process in a more ordered manner. Uh, but yes, you're quite right. The, ideally, do the right thing in the first place. But yes, we are always going to have exceptions, so it is good to have extra information. Definitely. Um, so who have we, who do we know who's, uh, who is uh, aligned with our format so far? Who's What's the uptake? You're talking about society-wise? Societies, uh, QSheet, sheet software manufacturers, produ production companies, who, who has taken this up? Who do we know will be taking this up? I mean, we can name the people I'm assuming who are involved in the group. Uh, I'm sure we can name a few others as well. Well, I think we're so just in the process of discovering that and, and, and uh, getting the word out about the tool. So I think that that will only grow from this point forward. And I think we are looking, you know, Jens, uh, Gamer has uh, embraced this format, yes? Yeah, most of the societies um, um, providing this um, format to their third parties, um, um, making um, announcements of, of this. Uh, we know that RapidQ is including this, this um, information. So I think we are at the starting point, disseminating and, and promoting this, this uh, as, as this uh, event here is taking place to promote this and talking about this cue sheet standard. I know that um, the DDEX group is also looking at this standard. And uh, so I think this is now work in progress and, and we have to do a lot of work more on them to yeah, bring this to the people. Yeah. I, I, th I think I could add to that that uh, Sony's a, Sony is a major film and TV uh, publisher. We work on behalf of uh, quite some, some substantial uh, producers. Uh, there were some substantial producers on the group. All of these people are, as far as I know, uh, very receptive of the idea. I think that the proof uh, it will be in the pudding. We have to get people to start using it. It is being used. People are starting to use it. We're going to hopefully start to see that ball really rolling up 
uh, over the next year. Uh, and yeah. we'll be able to name some names for sure. Um, but we are definitely talking to a, a pretty much all of the major production companies and content creators about this one way or another, either directly or through their uh, publishing arm or through their, uh, their the publisher who is the publisher for their publishing arm, if you see what I mean. And, uh, you know, being in the film and TV music space primarily, my company and the production companies and broadcast networks that we represent, we have already sent this tool, said that it's going, it's being adopted on a global basis. And for this to be effective, because most of them do own their own publishing. And so it is of a business interest to them that they are compliant across the board. So we are encouraging this with every single client that uh, we engage. So that's the way it starts. And, and those of us who worked on the working group, those of us who are online here, we need to be able to uh, foster support with everybody we touch in our, in our you know, uh, different experiences so that we can get this adopted as, as quickly as possible. So through our MPAs, through our clients, with our local societies, yeah, you're using it, right? You know, GEMA, yeah, great. You know, and you know, Abramus, you're, you're using this, right? Yeah, you know, um, it, it, I, I think, Jens, you've always encouraged the rights owners to ask the society what's happening. If they, if, if they have a question, just ask. And if there's an issue, try to work it out. You know, that's why we have the Society Publisher Forum so that we can air these different ideas and, and needs and uh, get results. And now we have that and something uh, quite substantial. Yeah, cool. Um, there's a question here. Will these cue sheets always be in English or will there be multilingual versions for each territory? So uh, to a certain extent, that depends on the producer. The producer can produce the cue sheet in the language of their preference uh, or indeed in multi-languages. We, we, we plan to roll out versions of this cue sheet standard in multiple languages. And I think John touched upon that at the very beginning. Uh, and we will be calling on many people to help us with that work. Um, nice. But the yes, certainly there's no intention for this to be a single English language format or standard. Um, OK, I'm probably coming to the end of the questions, which I don't at some level touch on something we've talked about already, unless somebody has a. Oh, here we are. I have a question here. Hopefully you're brave enough to approach AV producers directly with a light version of this standard. Many of the fields are such that an AV producer cannot fill, but I imagine that half filled sheet is a good start in point for a music CMO. I think that touches upon the mandatory fields, non-mandatory fields that we talked yes. about earlier. The, the mandatory fields are the bare minimum. We would hope everybody can get to more than the bare minimum. And many of these things are about identifying the production which the producer is producing. If they don't know those things about the production, then something is tragically wrong at their end. Um, if they don't know who, what the title of the production is, then they are in a confused state as a producer. Um, if they don't know the, uh, you know, the information that's the metadata of the production itself. Um, so when it comes to identifying the works, the bare minimum is the title and the writers and the splits. Uh, and that's uh, as much as we ask today, but in a standardized way. Um, anyway, I am, is the working group addressing reporting of commercials and adverts? There is a separate working group which has produced a similar document to this, which is for commercial specifically, but which contains many of the identifiers which are common in the commercials world, but not in the uh, film and television world. Obviously, with the merging of all types of AV into one amorphous blob, there's no particular reason to, to differentiate, uh, except that commercials do have a whole world of different identifiers and are generally much more snippety. Um, but in general, these formats and the standards within them are consistent with each other. So we would never use a term in one that is not consistent with the terms in the other. Uh, and right, I'm going to go to each member of the panel and say, is there anything else you wanted to add 
that we fail to add, and then we'll, uh, we'll I think we should wrap it up. Um, Jens, you first. Anything you'd like to say? I'd like to say thank you for everything you've done. You've worked extremely hard pulling us together and caramming us over the past God knows how many years. Um, and I hope you'll continue to corral us and uh, work <laughs> on the next steps. Yes, th thanks for inviting us and, and having uh, the opportunity to talk about uh, this this great project. And um, yeah, I'm 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 hopefully everyone uh, will support this uh, new standard and and help us to disseminate these uh, rules and and help us um, yeah to establish this um, great work. I think. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, it's, Terry, you next. Yeah, uh, it's such a pleasure to be here. And um, I'm very thankful to be a part of this working group. And Jens, you've been fabulous to work with. And thank you so much. Uh, and I will say that as a publisher rep of the AIMP and of the IMPF, we are working hard to be able to make sure that the work of the Society Publisher Forum is definitely embraced by all constituencies. So, you know, it's something that we as um, uh, music rights owners, uh, we will support and continue to support through our different conferences and the like. And, you know, when we first started this webinar, there was this song that came on and it said, deliver me away from this madness. Well, you know what? I think our Q sheet format has done that. Yeah. <laughs> and hopefully it can continue to make life a little bit easier and this stuff won't look as daunting in the long term. So thank you so much. It's, uh, it's great to be a part of this uh, forum. Thank you, Terry. Have really same back at you. And finally, um, Mark, thank you for joining us and uh, hopefully joining us in a more meaningful way in the near future as well. Yeah, well, thanks for, thanks for having me. You know, I think it's a great, great initiative. Uh, we are very supportive of it, and I think the vast majority of our clients would be very supportive of it as well. There's always a handful that are very particular and very specific about how they want things, but I think the vast majority of our clients very much welcome this. Um, you know, we are compliant with it, uh, and to be honest, it was actually very easy for us to become compliant because I think the version category was the only thing that we had to change, but otherwise it was sort of there already. Um, and so, you know, th th that sort of means it's, it, it's, it makes a lot of sense as well. So I think, you know, there's a lot of very good reasons to do this. And I think, you know, from my perspective, the next step is to get the word out, but also to get uh, agreement across the board um, um, that this is a format that should be adopted and that we don't have this, uh, you know, for lack of a better word, madness, whereby a cue sheet for one program in one country cannot be reported properly to a, uh, to a society in another country. Um, and, uh, you know, perhaps uh, uh, the, the, the whole uh, annotation or interaction of the publishers is something that should be added at the same time. I think that would be a very positive development as well. And, and also for publishers to have the ability to, um, uh, you know, report some of those cue sheets, because right now the publishers are sort of not able to to interact in that reporting process. I think if they could have some sort of level of interaction, that would be very good as well. It's definitely something that we are interested in looking at. Great. Right. Thank you very much. So thank you for joining us. Um, I don't know if ICMP want to say a few closing remarks or uh, how we shut these things down. I'm a, I'm a new to an uh, ICMP um, and see that hosted then. Alex, Alex, before we close, just to thank you uh, uh, thank you oh, for conducting this very well. Thank you for all the, the ones that are attending us from all over the world. There are people from Japan, Nashville, New York, London, uh, Brazil, uh, all over Europe as well. And thank you guys for all for, for spending this time with us. It's really important to have the support uh, of publishers and societies in the SPF uh, so we can keep uh, really pushing societies and pushing publishers to get involved in the important projects uh, uh, and the important standards we're working on. Uh, getting the, the, the feedback and the support is it's, it's really important and uh, for all of us that are really working hard. Congratulations for Terry and Jens for the great work you've done so far. And thank you, Mark, very much uh, uh, for, the, for sharing all the knowledge as well. And thank you very much, Cizak and NICMP for, for letting us talk here for that long. 
And thank you to my uh, co-chair for being such a gent as always. Our pleasure. If I may just reiterate our thanks to everyone on this group, but also the broader SPF. This has been a long project, as Gally mentioned at the outset, for five years of incredible work. Uh, the experts are on this panel today. And uh, all we can do basically is now that this tool has been designed, is to uh, try and grow the uptake of it. And that's our mission here at ICMP. So uh, we're right behind everything that the SPF is doing. And uh, thanks for a fascinating webinar today. And uh, we look forward to seeing you very soon. Uh, Gaddy, I'll pass to you for uh, final remarks. Thanks, just again to echo what uh, Johnny said. Thank you all uh, for the amazing work and thanks for the wonderful presentations. Very convincing, very important. And let's make sure that uh, everyone makes the most of this uh, project and uses it as much as we can. Thank you. Excellent. Hope to see you all soon in person. For now, all the best. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye, guys. All the best. Take care.